Hi, I'm Usar. Uh, so I wanted to do a little quick video on how you can sort of read a waveform inside your workstation, what it means, and um, how uh, certain things involving waveforms might make sense or not make sense based on what you know about how they work. Because I just did a video about the uh, harmonic overtone series and how you can build a chromatic scale based on that. Uh, and in that video, I talked about how we know that uh, if you double a, a waveform or double an oscillator, you end up getting just double the volume. And it might not make sense at first uh, for why that is. And I know for me, it was not a really uh, easy to understand concept until I got a couple of uh, years of experience and I learned a couple of pieces of information that helped me. So I figured I would just pass along that information in case you were ever curious about that or in case you watched that video and were a little bit confused. So hopping over here to the desktop, uh, I just have an Ableton session where you can see it's just uh, just a sine wave. I just took a sine wave and uh, made it nice and large so we can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, it just sounds like this. It's like a sine wave, something that if you've made music in the past, uh, I don't know, 50 years, uh, Maybe not that long, but you probably have heard something like this uh, ever since ever since computer music has been a thing. Um, <clears throat> so what this represents is the oscillation of the uh, wave particles or excuse me, of the air particles. It is generally counted based on the number of cycles uh, that determines the pitch rather. Um, so from this point right here to this point right here, that is one wave cycle from about here to here. Uh, so you can see that this form, this sinusoidal wave, is just repeating over and over. And the number of times it repeats in one second is what determines its pitch. We call that a hertz or a CPS for cycles per second. Uh, this is, I believe, um, C two octaves below middle C. And you see it just kind of moves back and forth. Um, and one helpful way that I learned to understand this is to look at this in terms of what the speaker cone is doing. You know, we can see here that there is a very faint line cutting through the middle of this. And you can see that it goes from that middle point all the way up to the top of this uh, waveform view. It comes back down smoothly and then it comes all the way back in and then repeats. And so I, I realize that if you, if you look at that in terms of like your speaker cone, it actually starts to make a lot of sense. So as this goes up, your speaker cone is being pushed out. Um, it's being moved forward to the point where it gets all the way extended. And then as this comes down, it starts returning back towards the center position where it's not uh, moving uh, from where it started. Then it's going to start sucking in, moving back in closer towards the center of the speaker cabinet or your headphones if you're wearing headphones. And that's going to start pushing back out. And it's going to push all the way back out, push all the way back in, push all the way back out, push all the way back in. And just slowly but surely, you get this nice gentle oscillation. And that oscillation sounds like a sine wave, sounds like a, a pure tone, as I like to call it. Um, so what happens when we start dealing with more than one of these? So if I take this <clears throat> and we play this together, you can tell that we just get the same sound, but louder. Now, why is that? Um, so we know that at rest, at the, this middle point, at what is called the zero crossing, um, the headphone speaker or the amplifier speaker in your uh, computer monitors, your speakers, your phone, anything that puts out sound, that's when it is at rest. We can consider that the number zero. When it's pushed all the way out, we can consider that one. When it's pushed all the way in, we can consider that minus one. So this is a range from plus one at the peak to minus one at the trough. If we are adding plus one and plus one together, 
or 1 plus 1, that equals 2. If we were to make this half as loud, that would be 1 plus 0.5. So let's go here to 15. Well, let's do it in here so you can see it better. We're at plus 11.9, so it's effectively plus 12. So I'm going to do this to 6 instead. Now we can see it only goes to about halfway. I'm actually going to push this up to 12 to make it an even number. There we go. So now we only get half the volume increase we got here. Because again, plus 1 or plus 0.5 plus 1 equals 2 or 1.5. But what happens when we start to change where these waves start? We can adjust the starting position of the waveform by modulating its phase. This is the phase of the signal. As I move this left and right, I am adjusting the phase relative to the starting point. So if this is 0% phase or 0 degrees phase, we could look at this as... Uh, maybe like a plus 10, plus 15. Uh, this is plus 180 approximately. I, I can't do it exactly, but this is approximately um, 180 degrees. And if you notice that when we do that, the peaks and the troughs start to reverse their position. So as this goes down, this goes up. But what happens when we do that? You can see this isn't perfectly off, but notice it gets so quiet we almost can't hear it. And now if I uh, just set this back to normal by deleting this and copying this down, there we go, I'll copy it back up. And then I would use a uh, Ableton Utility plugin or, or any sort of plugin that allows you to uh, manipulate the phase of the signal. And I'm going to invert the polarity. See left right phase. This is going to reverse it. So if I actually just uh, froze and flatten this, there you go. You can see it has completely flipped where those peaks and troughs are. We have silence. You can see both of these waveforms are playing. Let's do a height like that, there we go. And zoom in on width, there we go. So both of these waveforms are putting out volume. If I mute this one, all of a sudden, it, it comes back in. What we have here is what's called phase cancellation. So as we adjust the phase, we start to get more and less phase cancellation. Because remember, if we are at zero degrees phase and 180 degrees phase, what we have is plus one, plus minus one, or one minus one. And one minus one is zero. So it's like our speaker cone is being told, just stay where you are, just stay right at the middle. And uh, there's a couple of other things that kind of involve itself with this. So if I had to take this and I detune it five cents, not a full uh, semitone, just a couple of cents. We're going to freeze and flatten this again to see what happens to the waveform. Oh, notice how all of a sudden the wave starts moving. And notice how it's not a even consistent change each time. Like this peak is right around this trough. This peak is a little bit closer. This peak is a little bit closer. And as we get further on, the peaks are going to get closer and closer together until there's a point at which they actually line back up. You can see it's very, very slight. You hear that? That pulsing of volume is what happens as the waveforms come into and out of phase with each other while being so close together. If I set this to 25 
to make it 30. Well, let's just do 20 for now. And we freeze and flatten. And you can even kind of see the waveforms moving in different ways. So this bottom one is almost moving back and forth. And we could go even further. We could go 25 cents for 50 cents, which is one semitone, or which is actually a quarter tone. You see how that you do that? So we do this up 25 even faster. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna modulate that. But we are gonna set this now to um, minus 25 a semitone up. If we do this right here, freeze and flatten this, it's really starting to beat faster because what we have done is we have now um, created a distance of one semitone apart. Um, and the more we uh, increase this, the more the rhythms will change until we start to get to very discrete and independent pitches. Um, <clears throat> and this works with uh, complex waveforms as well. Um, if I go in and I grab a sample of some sort of uh, harmonically complex waveform, such as like a, a neuro respace. Let's take this waveform. Let's copy it. And then let's invert its phase. Now this is a very washy sound. There's a lot of stuff going on. So what happens when we phase invert it? It didn't go completely away, but we hear a very thin Something really interesting is happening here. Because there was discrete independent information in the left channel and the right channel for this sound, anything that was not is now gone because it's almost like we did that phase inversion only on those sounds. Because uh, when they flipped in polarity, the positions of the left and right channels weren't exactly as they uh, were for that sine wave. If we open up signalizer right here, whoops. You can see as this gets bigger and smaller that the, the signal actually starts to blend. And if we look at through the spectral analyzer, so you get some really interesting tones there. Let me see if we can make this a bit more obvious. Let's go over here. I'm, I'm still learning this plugin, I apologize. I don't know if I'll be able to do this. So let's try aux graph. Nope. No configuration. Mid and side. So I believe the dark blue is the, um, yeah. Graph one, which I believe the main graph is the mid information. And this is the side information. So if we turn this off. And turn it back on. Notice how we lose all that. So um, that is important for a number of reasons, in my opinion. Um, first of all, I think that it is important to know what is happening to your waveforms, how they're interacting with each other. Because if you get undesirable phase cancellation, it could make your mix feel thin and weak when things are compressed down to a monophonic signal. Because um, then they'll cancel each other out instead of existing in different parts of the stereo field, like they are with this example that we just finished. Um, additionally, we can use that as a sound design tool to create phase cancellation and otherwise find parts of sounds, find parts of tracks that we might not have otherwise engaged with, we might not have otherwise heard. And then we can use those for further processing. Um, it's important to know for recording for the same reason as the first one, where if you are recording, for example, a drum set and you have, let's say, 
uh, five microphones. You have a microphone over the kick, you have a microphone over the snare, you have a microphone over like the tom, the floor tom on your right side, and then you have two more mics for your overheads to kind of give you uh, the information from the cymbals and the hi-hats and the mid-toms and stuff like that. Because the drum set is so close together, there is going to be bleed between the microphones. So if you end up cutting out some of that information using an equalizer and the distance between the microphone here and the microphone here is enough to create a phase inversion of those signals because they're moving at different times, you will end up losing signal that you might not have otherwise wanted to lose because the signal is now starting to get phased because of the equalizer and because of the distance between the two bled mics. So you want to pay attention to that. You want to know where the phase is going in your signals. Um, so I would uh, suggest experimenting with a number of sounds. Try monophonic sounds, try stereo sounds, try recordings and try synthesizers. Deal with things that have purely digital waveforms or things that have more analog waveforms which will have naturally different phases uh, because instead of the note uh, oscillator starting on the note um, as you play it, uh, it will actually be continuously running and then you're just triggering essentially a volume gate to turn it on and off. I hope that was helpful for everyone who watched this. Um, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'll be checking those comments out uh, and replying to them. Um, if you did find this helpful, um, please give the video a like, uh, maybe give the channel a follow. Thank you so much for hanging out with me right now and uh, you know, Stay safe and be happy. Bye.